Hi, Micro Fuchs. Um, this is not a lab video. <laughs> this is supposed to um, help us with our next big unit coming up on viruses. And I just wanted to show you some um, posters that previous micro students have made and some models. Um, and uh, I, I wish we all could be together so you guys could examine these in more detail, but we'll just go with it. So folks, um, ho hopefully before you see this movie, you've watched the um, Unit 7 Viruses um, PowerPoint 1, the introduction. So we're just, on this little movie, we're just going to talk about bacterial viruses called bacteriophage. Okay, and phage means to eat, and it's because historically, when um, the activity of bacterial viruses was observed, um, people thought something was eating the bacteria. And indeed, with um, some of our, our bacterial viruses, um, when they get into the bacteria, they can undergo a process called lytic replication. And in re lytic replication, they're going to make copies of their nucleic acid, copies of their proteins. And the result will be they're going to end up lysing and killing their bacterial host. And thus, that's called lytic replication. This is a real famous bacteriophage, bacteriophage T4, and probably it's it's just it looks so science fiction, right? It looks like a lunar lander or some science fiction um, spaceship. So, folks, remember from lecture we said with our bacteriophage, they have an outer protective coat, um, and um, in the bacteriophage, these are what we call complex viruses because they have many different parts. So this top part, the head or the capsid, is made of protein and it's um, protecting the DNA of the bacteriophage. So the T4 bacteriophage are DNA viruses. And then in addition to the head folks, they have th this very elaborate tail that's also made out of proteins. And um, this central portion of the, t of the tail um, the collar and the sheath. We can almost think of this it, like acting almost like a hypodermic syringe. And inside there's an inner protein core that's going to act as a hypodermic needle. Um, the phage is going to inject that needle across the E. coli cell wall and cell membrane and inject the phage DNA into the E. coli. Now what's really important is that viruses have to attach to the surface of their host cell and usually this attachment is very specific. Um, so down here you guys see this beautiful tail, these tail fibers. At the tips of the tail fibers will be special proteins we call adhesins. And um, adhesin sounds like adhesive tape, right? So you might guess that the um, bacteriophage will use the adhesins at the end of their tail fibers to attach to very specific molecules on the surface of the bacterial host. And then once they once they do, um, as we said, they're going to in um, they're going to puncture the bacterial cell membrane and cell wall with this protein needle and inject the um, phage DNA into the E. coli. And then the phage DNA just basically takes over the poor little bacterium. So then um, next we're going to take a look at some cool models. I have a feeling these are really old, but they're, I love models, you know, toys, you can't beat toys. So folks, this is a, a series of models that show the steps in the lytic replication of E. coli um, when it's infected by the T4 bacteriophage. So let me, let me angle this down. So this first one, folks, this just represents our E. coli. So here's our poor innocent little E. coli. And then um, here's our T4 bacteriophage, and we can see you guys the head that contains the DNA. Here's the, the collar and the, sh the sheath, um, part of the tail. And then these little blue wires, these are the tail fibers. And remember at the tips of the tail fiber, there'll be special proteins, the adhesins, that will bind to, sp will bind to sp specific receptors on the surface of the E. coli um, cell wall. So if a uh, virus lacks receptors to attach to the surface of a cell, it can infect them. Okay. And then, folks, this poor little um, E. coli, you can just barely see how the tail has contracted and it's driven that protein needle across the bacteria's cell wall and cell membrane. And that little piece of what looks like brown spiral spaghetti, that's the bacterial virus DNA, the phage DNA. And once it gets into this poor little bacterium, this little bacterium is going to be a goner. In the next model, we can see once the phage DNA gets into the bacterium, 
the bacterial enzymes copy the phage DNA because DNA polymerase can't tell the difference between uh, phage or viral DNA and chromosomal DNA. Um, so we have copies of phage DNA that get made. What we're not seeing is that the phage DNA would also be transcribed and translated into phage proteins. And some of those phage proteins are gonna um, destroy the uh, bacterial chromosomal DNA. Um, so the bacterial chromosomal DNA will act as building blocks to make copies of phage DNA. So the bacterial chromosome gets all um, um, fragmented and then here, folks, this is what's just, to me, is so totally amazing. So the um, phage protein self-assemble, this is just wild, you guys. The phage protein self-assemble into these empty capsids, these empty heads. And then, and then um, the capsid, the heads, will automatically package little bits of DNA that are floating around in the cytoplasm. And most of the, the, most of the DNA that will be floating around is going to be phage DNA. So most of the phage heads, the phage capsids, will get packaged with um, phage DNA. And then, furthermore, to make this crazy, you guys, it's hard to see here in this little model, but there would be um, the protein um, tails, um, the sheath and collar, and the tail fibers. And once the phage DNA is packaged into the capsid, the tail will self-assemble. It will um, join the um, capsid to make the um, mature um, virus particle. Now just kind of to um, throw in an aside here folks, in um, lecture we'll talk about horizontal gene transfer in which bacteriophage can transfer DNA from a donor bacterium to a recipient bacterium and we said that transduction is when bacteriophage transfer the DNA. So it's during this packaging process folks that by accident a piece of the bacterial chromosomal DNA could get packaged into the phage head or capsid and then that phage is carrying bacterial donor DNA not phage DNA, but it's still infectious. Um, when the phage break out of this little E. coli, it'll kill this little E. coli, the donor. That phage carrying the donor uh, bacterial DNA can bind to another E. coli and inject that donor DNA into a, a recipient bac bacterium. And that donor bacterial DNA can get inserted into the recipient's chromo chromosome through homologous recombination. So you might recall we said in lecture that that's called generalized transduction because any of the donor bacterial genes can be transferred to the recipient. Okay, so here folks were in the, um, um, we're in uh, what's called assembly. So again, the phage DNA is getting packaged into the phage heads or capsids. The tails are being assembled. And we don't have an actual cartoon here or a model of the fully assembled phage. But the result will be, once they're assembled, they release a lysozyme-like substance, a phage lysozyme-like substance. And as a result, the poor bacterium, this is our lysed bacterium, right? And it's kind of hard to see, but here's all these newly replicated phage. They'll be released, and they're going to um, attach to neighboring bacteria and infect them and, um, and trigger this lytic cycle all over again. So for this reason, if we are growing um, bacteriophage, lytic bacteriophage, on a lawn of, of bacteria, say E. coli, if we incubate them and then we check the plates the next day, in that lawn of bacteria, we'd see these little clear circles. And those clear circles are called plaques. And they're the result of the bacteriophage lysing one bacterium and then the new uh, bacteriophage bind to the neighboring bacterium. They kill them and they, they just keep working their way outward, killing all the bacteria in that region. And that's what we will um, recognize as those clear zones, those plaques on a lot of bacteria. Okay, folks, we'll stop this one here. And the next little movie will be on animal human viruses, just showing you some of the structures and, again, some of the cool models that your colleagues have made in the past.